Hello everyone, West Ham Fan TV. Uh, this is just a quick video. Uh, as most of you know, we attended a meeting with Karen Brady the other night. Uh, so we're just going to quickly go through some of the main topics that were discussed uh, and give you a little bit of feedback about the meeting. So let's get straight into it. Um, some of the people that was there, ex-employee, Dave and Kevin from Sex, Drugs and Colt and Cole, Gordon from Knees Up Mother Brown and um, David from Bubble Bl oh. Blowing Bubbles magazine. Um, so yeah, it started off, Nicky went straight in, as he always does, dive straight in with the first question, where's the, where's the money? Yeah, What's the budget? Um, and yeah, she was a bit open, not too open about it, but she basically said that the rumours that have been flying about, about 20 million is not true, they haven't set a budget yet, um, and he will be backed, um, he's identified, David Moyes has identified a couple of players that he wants already. Players will have to leave, mm. um, and they know who they are. She didn't tell us. She, we ain't that close yet. But mm. um, yeah, and then we spoke a bit about Sacco. Uh, he still wants to go um, for certain reasons. <laughs> and um, yeah, we spoke a bit. I think ex-employee brought up about players release uh, relegation release con uh, clause in their contract. Uh, the only player that had one was Winston Reid, which has been removed. Um, yeah, I think that was it really, wasn't it, for the beginning? Yeah. Anything else? Uh, where's the money? Yeah, where's the money? <laughs> that, was the, that was the main thing. Uh, yeah. Um, next we spoke about, which was a main main topic really, was about um, uh, the badge. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about the badge. As you know, it's been brought up in with other groups, the Real West Ham Fan Action Group. Uh, they, they, it's one of their main topics, which is with us. Um, it's been mentioned before. They're not going to change the badge. Um, we mentioned about having East London on it. Um, that's another thing, like you said, it's, it will... They, they, look, what you've got to understand is when they have these redesigns done, they somebody charges them about a million quid to do that. Um, everything that they've implemented into the stadium, they're not just going to chuck it away after one season. But for the next couple of years, I think they should look at changing something. Yeah, well, it's... But on our old one. Yeah, but in, over our history, we've always changed our badge, didn't we, over a few years? And yeah. Either added the castle or whatever, but... Yeah, I mean, it's saying that, that hopefully they will look into it, but we also mentioned about honouring our badge and uh, our old badges and our history now, and one thing we come up with was um, having it around the ground, mm. a history of our badges. As you go around the ground... Um, either have a banner up or I think even Karen Brady herself uh, said that where they've got the shirts mm. they could replace that with um, represent the castle and all that represent stuff. the castle yeah. uh, just the history the Ironworks badge and, and also I mentioned about on the outside and on the inside of the stadium on the walls that are playing having pictures of our history our cup wins and just things like that just to make it feel a bit more like home mm. so yeah I mean very proud of our history yeah we're, we're, like we said in the meeting, West Ham, are, West Ham fans are proud of their history, and um, and we just want to see it at our ground. Also, under that um, back banner would be the museum that we proposed. Um, yeah, she said a, a lot of the stuff from the bowling I, I thought had been sold off, which is not the case apparently. <coughs> no, it's apparently in storage. It's in storage. So um, yeah, yeah, so we that, suggested about a museum. They had one at the bowling ground in the club shop. Yeah. Um, so that's something that they're going to look into as well, uh, which would be good uh, for people that do tours of the ground and just on match days. Dave from Sex, Drugs and Colton Cole brought up uh, about the Bobby Moore statue. Where is it? Why ain't it here yet? Uh, there was a few... I think it was to do with Newham Council, wasn't it? Um, it's to do with Newham Council. Apparently now that's all been sorted. and getting all resolved and it's going to be here. She said they will be here by the end of this season, didn't she? So Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, fingers crossed that's a... That'd be massive. It'd be good to have that. Um, um, yeah, go on. What, what are we up to? What are we up to? Uh, right, half time. This was another thing that was um, brought up. A uh, big discussion about this. Uh, previous meetings we've said about uh, the queues. They're bad. The staff are bad. Pre poured beers will be better. They have done it. They try. Like the, the staff are so slow. Yeah, that's that's the that's, the staff are slow pouring beers. I mean, even if they pre poured them themselves five minutes before. Um, but they started pre-pouring them and it worked well it, not really because they're still slow why yeah, them pre -pour, <laughs> pour, you know even if they're pre-poured it takes them five minutes to go to the guy and get one yeah it's ridiculous really which um, was mentioned but yeah another another problem. thing was about mentioned and it's been mentioned in other groups as well about half time is uh, 
Um, you rush in, you don't get enough time. I know the Premier League rules, you can only have 15 minutes half time, but you come up with a good suggestion, so I'll let you uh, put the telly on. <laughs> put the telly on in the in the concourse, like viewable within you know the bar area and all that stuff, so people can actually watch what's going on as they're getting their beers or drinking it. Um, for 10 minutes of the of the half just so people ain't rushing their drinks or rushing back if there's a goal scored and all yeah. that yeah I that's, that's be... the most frustrating thing you queue up for 10 minutes you get your beer and then you find yourself rushing it because the teams are coming out um, and you're leaving half of it you're chucking half it away or you like you said St. Edmunds and a goal scored and you rush back but yeah, if you are dangerous man yeah if you have the the screens on for show the first 10 minutes of the second half I think it, a lot of people will like that. I think people yeah, the take their time. Things, yeah. And then they can make, after 10 minutes, it goes off and you make your way back to your seat. Even if they put it on, on the, you know what? Because I go outside for a cigarette. <clears throat> Even if they put it on the big Titan Tron, <laughs> what they got up the top. Yeah. You know what I mean? So people outside can see it because there's stuff outside as well. But yeah, they're going to be um, looking at that, looking into that and implementing that within the next couple of games, yeah. I would imagine. Um, another thing that was brought up was, um, I think Dave at Six Rose and Carl Gold brought this up, uh, Billy Bonds. Yeah. Uh, he's been mentioned a few in a few meetings that the club should be honouring him a lot more. Um, I think we're safe to say this uh, from a previous meeting. Uh, they are looking to do a lot with Billy Bonds. Um, I think they're going to name, looking to name a walkway after him, a statue. Um, but we got a... F- realises that it's down to Billy Bonds um, and as we know he didn't have a great relationship with the club in the last few years uh, but they're building bridges now yeah. um, he's been to a few games uh, That listen the board uh, respect Billy Bonds a lot uh, they'd love to be, for him to be involved in the club and as you've seen from the latest Christmas posters out Billy Bonds is now part of it and Billy Bonds is a very shy man you know he don't want all the attention but I yeah. think he's coming around to it now because he knows how much we love him, and also other legends in the club that they're going to honour um, with certain things. But hopefully over the next season or two, we'll see a lot more of uh, Billy Bonds at West Ham. Yeah, good. Um, next thing we mentioned, uh, Ryan came up with this, he's a fan zone. We've mentioned this quite a few times in the past. They go down well at places like West Brom, Sunderland, Everton. Man City. Man City. Uh, we've got a very good one. Can we have <clears> one? <throat> First I said, no, no way. Then in the next meeting, I said, mm, we could look at it. And yeah. then in this one, Heineken looked to be doing some stuff. Heineken are going to be doing like pop-up tents outside. Yeah, with and things, things like that. Which ain't going the same. And... You know, I'd just like to see more for the kids. <coughs> you said that. Yeah. You'd like to see more for the kids. Um, it's a start, isn't it? It's a start. Like we said, like, you go to these fan zones, a lot of dads take their kids to the games and mums as well take their kids and they want to have a beer. Uh, in a fan zone, their kids can go and run off and go and take penalties against the next goalkeeper or do competitions and, and, and you know, it, obviously it works better in the summer mm. and also having ex-players involved in the van zone coming out like they do at City interviewing them, things like that. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Great for the club. That one. That one. Right. Um, one thing we did brought, bring up was um, the real West Ham fans action group. Um, That's we, Dave as well. Yeah, and Dave as well. We, we brought it up because we think they should be mentioned. Um, as you know, they're growing really fast. Uh, their followers and we 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 back everything they say. Um, we want the same as them. Um, yeah, we brought up their five point plan. Uh, the club are aware of it, uh, and I think hopefully they'll have them in soon, wouldn't they? Mm. Because they should be heard. They're, you know, Andy and Mickey are, are working hard to do to get that group really going and if you do heard. support them there's a meeting on Monday at the bowling pub 8pm yeah. and hopefully uh, I should I should be there on Monday because I, I back what they what they do and um, I think it's good um, listen deep down we don't want protests we don't want marches and I think Andy and Mickey don't want it to come to that but if it has to it has to They're so let's, to do it. let's hope that the club bring them in within the next um, week or two um, and yeah I think you know we're all in support of that. Next thing mentioned uh, was the claret carpet astro turf that goes around the edge. Now the green is ugly, ugly as shit. <laughs> We've all agreed on that. We asked them in the last meeting, can they change it? They said they could change it, but the LLDC opposed it, and they're still trying to get something sorted out. Um, but they wanted something like three hundred grand for the rental of the ground. Well, the thing is, she, uh, she said it wasn't about the money. It's not about the money. Well, well, well. It was about. Um, 
that they wanted to have a, a navy carpet put down, which the board obviously rejected straight away because that would be seen as Spurs colours. Yeah. So they're they're in talks now to to get the claret carpet down, and, and hopefully that will be maybe not maybe it's too late for this season, or maybe they could do it a few games towards the end of the season. But hopefully, definitely from next season, because I think that'd be a massive change. Yeah, it'd make it look a little bit more West Ham. Um, yeah, another thing that was brought up, uh, which is a big thing for us, was the Boxing Day games. We was told uh, in the previous meeting that um, we would never be able to play our home game because of Westfield. Um, apparently now that that is not an agreement. Not the case. No. It's not the case. So it looks like it because this year we've got another away game on Boxing Day, but that's the way the Premier League fixtures come out. We never requ- well, the, the board said they never requested it for to be away. So hopefully. Fingers crossed next season, um, because as we said, growing up as a kid, Boxing Day at home was always your favourite fixture. You loved it. You go there with your parents, and then as you grow up, you go there with your mates. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that one, but uh, fingers crossed. And another thing that was brought up was the two-day athletics in the summer. Uh, will it affect our fixtures like it did this year? Um, no, is the answer. Uh, there was a uh, athletics post to put out saying that they would be doing athletics on the 28th, 29th of July. Apparently that wasn't true and I was told to renegotiate or something, but they to redo it. But no, it won't affect it. There will even be pre-season friendlies there this year. Yeah, which is good. You know, as long as we don't, can't have three away games again. Jesus stick, Christ. Stick that there, right? <laughs> um, another thing that was brought up was, uh, and this is another main topic for the Real West Ham fan action group, is disabled supporters. Yeah. Um, they have done a lot better us providing buses to and from the station to the ground, which is good. But they've also now agreed with Westfield for disabled fans to have access through the through Westfield on match days, which they trialled at the Leicester game at home, and apparently it worked well. Karen Brady herself said, and, and I've seen a lot of um, disabled fans say, that they love the facilities in the stadium. They're much better, but it's getting to and from the stations. And now, hopefully, fingers crossed, that works out, and because as we know, we'd all like to walk through Westfield, but disabled fans for me, they must take priority. And as long as they're getting there mm. quicker, you know, it helps them, and it's a good thing. So hopefully that stays in place. Um, one thing that we did mention as well, um, as you know, the board, you know, they they we'll go a bit into more detail on this. Yeah, one. they've said a lot of things. Um, they get called liars and and things like that. And I call them liars. Yeah, whatever whatever feelings people have towards the board. Um, personally, I mean, we we've sat there with three three meetings with Karen Brady now. And we've seen her a little bit laid back. Um, you know, she's not a professional self. She has a laugh and a joke, and you see them in a different light. And I think sometimes if our supporters did see her like that, it you know they might take it a bit more better, but. One thing she did admit, she did hold her hands up and said they've made mistakes. They know they've made mistakes. So we like sort of suggested, well, why don't you come out and say that to the fans? Because I think if you want to build some sort of bridges with supporters, then do that. Me personally, I think all the bridges have been burnt. Um, I think I still do think they're liars. She, what she did say is that. Um, like we brought up the chanting at Watford and how serious do they take that and all that and they say they're very hurt by it but they're not quite sure what they've done wrong now I suggested that that was nonsense <laughs> to yeah. be honest um, and you know they do know what's going on but we we made no bones in telling them what yeah. they've done wrong the so bro- we said the, it's the broken promises the broken promises the lies you know the lies the, the deceit and she said she doesn't feel they do not feel like there is any um, but you know we highlighted the things that they said things like world class players uh, we can't move to the bowling unless the seats are as close mm. sort of skirted around that a little bit um, oh Sorry, one thing that I've just it's, I've just remembered from the meeting because obviously we didn't write things down, which maybe we should in future. She did mention about squaring off the seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you know, where it curves round yeah. in the stands, so that is something they're looking into to bring it forward just that little bit to make you feel a little bit closer to the. It's not going to make no difference to us because we're sort of midway. Yeah. So, but for them people at the front, um, they could be squaring them off. They could be squaring them off, which is another good thing as well. Yeah, um, you know, they didn't feel like there was. We we 
highlight a few things that they've said and done in the press and all that. We brought up the debt, which we haven't even written on this. We brought up the debt. Why are we still 100 million quid in debt? Um, and we said that, you know, we're still not happy about that. Um, she said the debt is structured in a certain way. The board have got 50, 50, 50 million, million and 50 million. Their debt, isn't yeah, but then they're not going to take it out and all that nonsense. But, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? At, at the end of the day, I still wanted to know why we're 100 million quid in debt. Um, didn't really get an answer on that. No, nah, I don't think, I don't I don't think, think we're the sort of people up. she's going yeah, to open up to about that. Stuff with. Um, but, yeah... Ryan suggested that they should do a fans forum yeah, I, I, and open it up to fans, yeah, I not think just it'd us. Be good. See, season ticket holders, I'm not just saying that anyone can come and, you know, because it would just be... There'd be know, murderers there, I, think, I reckon. Yeah, I think season ticket holders should be invited, the three of them, David Gold, David Sullivan, Karen Brady, all sit down and they, they take questions uh, from from the um, from the supporters. Uh, because like we said, we've brought up certain things, but there might be other things that we don't know about that could be brought up and mm. they should be able to be open and honest and answer these questions because like you said I, I think they owe it to people yeah I think you're right I mean maybe bridges can't be built but it's a, it's a little little way of going that if some people actually see that they've admitted that they're wrong like if, if David Sullivan come out and said right the, the 10 point plan we had of cha- it hasn't worked it hasn't worked we hold our hands up but let's start again here's another plan Yeah. this, this is what we're going to do you know, and look, it was only a suggestion. Whether they do it or not, I don't know. Mm. I, I, I don't think they will, but it was an idea. And I, I think they will. I think it'll be a good idea for for, for the three of them to idea. sit down and... Something that, um, before we go on to the next bit, the, the, the final thing that I can remember brought up was uh, Away Trains by Gordon Thrower. Um, he brought up you know, the treatment of away fans, which is not always the best in, in terms of, like, what do the club propose to do? She said that people don't like to get on team coaches, to, club, uh, coaches. club coaches, which is true. I yeah. don't like getting on a no. fucking club coach. Um, so Gordon brought up the good suggestion that Chelsea um, lay on trains, which I think... They better not win it. Um, which I think that, um, you know, is a great idea. It's a great idea because some of the trains that are, you know, when, especially when you plan away midweek and all that, you know, the trains two minutes after the, the, the final yeah. whistle and it's, it's fucking bollocks to be yeah, Especially quiet. when you go up to sort of like Manchester and Liverpool, they're the sort of places that the last trains are ridiculous. Wednesday so, night. I know. So, but West Ham, uh, she said they're going to, she wasn't aware that you could do that. She was, but so they're going to look into it. They're going to liaise with Chelsea, uh, how they do it. So yeah. that that could be another good thing. I think that'll go down well with supporters. That'll go down really well with supporters. So before we finish up here and we've got about five minutes to to kill, a couple of minutes to kill. Um one thing I've got to say is that when we go to anything like this, um people start to say that we've been bought by the board or the board's got to us or this or this or this, which you know, if anyone that knows us personally, I take that very offensively because I'll never be bought by a board or or whatever Um, but I'll take that very offensive because you know I do my best to um, what's the word yeah to to, to speak for to to speak my mind yeah you know what I mean and no one's going to influence my mind and all this nonsense but the thing is that don't, don't help is that like we mentioned him earlier on is that people like um, Gordon Throw, who who goes under the name of Gnome on the um, Knees Up Mother Brown forum. Now, traditionally, we've got a very good tr- uh, relationship that we've made no bones about the fact that they've helped us get started. People like James Longman and um, uh, Graham. Graham Howlett um, have been very supportive of us from the start. We've still got sections on their um, website, for God's sake. Um, but... I read something on their forums, which, you know, I was very quick to dispense and, and I know Ryan was very quick to dispense on Twitter because the, it comes out that this guy, um, Gordon Thrower, for some reason, and I don't know why he would do this, portrayed that he was the only one doing anything mm. in the meeting and saying anything. Now, that's all well and good if he, if, you know, if he feels that way. But I can tell you something now, that is not the case. No. And like he 
you know, after we've called him out on it, he come out and said that, you know, we've um, misinterpreted his words or whatever. That's not the case. He said that he was a lone voice in that place. Now, a lone voice, and he was the only one that was uh, critical towards the board. It's basically nonsense. saying that the rest of us were sitting there agreeing with agreeing him, agreeing with him, and up their ass because. I turned around to, at one point, and I even told Karen Brady to her face. I said, look, I don't like you. I, I don't like you. And, and she took that well. She, she knows that. And uh, so for, for me, if I'm up her ass, why would I be saying things like that? This, this is what I mean. People like him, uh, Graham, who I thought was the uh, uh, first time I've ever met him. Gordon. First time he's, uh, sorry, Gordon. First time he's ever been at one of these he meetings. He walked back to the station with us. We walked back to the station with him. You know, we shook his hand when we left. You know, nice to meet you. And then for him the next day to go in there and say that, it, it's absolutely a joke. And I know people, some people have got their followers and they love um, love saying things to them to, and they get responses back and it boosts their ego and things like that. You know, I don't like things like that because f- for him to say that, all them people on his forum, and I see it on Hammer's chat forum as well, I see someone right on there, oh, apparently someone from these other programs saying he was the only voice. So that's going around on all these different forums because Dave at Sex, Drugs and Cole and Cole... He gets a lot of stick for being up the board's ass. He's got he's got his um, opinions. So we agree with some of them. We don't like. He probably don't agree with some of the stuff we say. That's fair enough. But he was the first person to actually in that meeting to come out and say you you ballsed up the PR. Yeah. You balls that up the free ear. You know. So and 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 this this golden bloke like I don't know what he's why he done it. You know. But for me. Like, I hope he comes to the next meeting because I'd like to have a face to face chat with him and ask him why why he said why it. You feel if like he that, wants yeah. to meet at the next home game if he's there, you know, I don't I, bother me because I don't like things like that because we're not about that and people that follow us know we're not about that. You know, there's other certain people on Twitter um, that moan that they don't get invited to these meetings and that. Well, you can come to these meetings, you can come to these meetings, but you choose not to. No. Because when it comes down to it, you know, and you are invited, you won't want to come. And these are other people as well. And, and things like this, it really, really pisses me off. It really pisses me off because some people just love to give their followers and, and their, their, their supporters. No, the their... thing that annoys me about that is the fact that, like, when you, when you perceive us like that, right, when you've got someone that's in that meeting that perceives us in that <clears> light that says... Oh, you know, everyone else was just sitting. I was a lone voice. No one was saying anything, which puts us under that bracket. Now, I'm not talking for the others. Like, the others can talk for themselves. They want to stick up for themselves. That's up to them. You know what I mean? But I'm going to stick up for us. Is the fact that, yeah, he might be all well and good sitting behind a computer. Like, who knows what Gordon Thrower looks like? You know what I mean? This is what I'm going to say. Who knows what he looks like? But I tell you what, when you're putting us under a bracket that makes us sound like we're bald lovers and that we, you know, we sat in there kissing their ass, and I'm in front of West Ham fans week in, week out, my face is all over the internet, and there's people going to misperceive what I stand for and what I went in there and done, and they think I'm going to say I'm saying one thing on on camera and another thing in a room in a, in a meeting. I can tell you for, for for now, I am what I am, and I come as I am, and I've never changed for anyone in any of these meetings or any of this stuff. So if you're going to misperceive someone that can come to my face and, you know, attack me, I'm, I'm calling you a liar. Hmm. Simple as that. No, no, and I, I, do you know what? I apologise to Graham and I apologise to the to the readers and these out Mother Brown and I apologise to all of that because I don't want to bring them into it. I've always had a good relationship with him, but I'm not, I'm not having someone tell lies about me and saying so, that we've sat in a room. Especially someone that we've only just met. And I'll be honest with you, first 20 minutes of that meeting he didn't even say anything look I'm not going to come on here and slate him because I'm not about that he's he's he's, no, he's... Not everyone's just tur- no, no, I'm know, not slating anyone I but know, I'll tell but... you something now he never took responsibility for anything he said no no he, yeah he, he basically everything he was saying he was saying that was coming from the forum so they weren't even his questions they probably was, but when he got a bit backtracked, he just blamed it on someone that asked him to ask that. Mm. But look, as I, I, I said before, I apologise to Graham yeah, and all them. On we've the always had. A, I, I wish Graham. Graham's been to these meetings before. He knows what we're like. You ask him. Yeah. You know, that's look. Anyway, I'm not getting into wars with people. Nah, I've had all that shit. I'm not. Like I said, I'd like to. I, 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 at the next meeting, I hope he's there again. I hope Graham's there, and I hope Graham can bring Gordon. Because uh, I'd like to have another chat with him, just to say, like, why would you say that? Because I've seen X, 
come out and say that we, everyone was vocal. I've seen uh, Dave and... I'd like to see um, David from... Uh, Brian Bubbles. Brian Bubbles magazine. I'd like to see him come out and have a say on it as well because he was uh, he was vocal on some of the things he was saying as well. Yeah. So I, for him to make it, Gordon make out that he was the only one in that room being very vocal. Nonsense. Is Yeah. Nonsense. Bollocks. Bollocks, yeah. For one of a better. We're right. We better wrap it up there. Yeah, wrap it up there. Thank you very much for joining us on this special edition of, what, what should we call this? Brady's Bunch. Brady's Bunch. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> No, yeah, four of me and fans yeah, for a fan, No, no, not at all. No, that's not what it was I'm, at all. I'm, I'm, um, yeah, for, for you know, <laughs> for your update on the uh, on on the bloggers meeting, which we we attend uh, or try to attend every time. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, one thing left to say until the next meeting. Come, come on, you lines. lines.